QuickBooks Online 2023 Enter transactions for owner deposit and loan deposit using bank feeds. Get ready to start moving on up with QuickBooks Online 2023. Here we are in our bank feeds practice file. We started up in a prior presentation using the 30 day free trial. We also have opened the free QuickBooks Online sample company. If you want the two open at the same time, we suggest using the incognito window or another browser. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. You can open incognito if using Google Chrome by selecting the three dots in the browser, choosing incognito window, typing into the search engine, QuickBooks Online Test Drive. We're using the sample company to compare the accounting view, the one that the bank feeds practice file is in, and the business view, the one the sample company is in. If you want to toggle between the two views, you can go to the cog up top and switch the view on down below. We're going to open some tabs to put reports in like we do every time. Right click on the tab to do so, and then we're going to duplicate it right clicking on the duplicated tab so we can duplicate it again back to the tab to the middle that we duplicated just a second ago and then we're going to go to the reports on the left hand side and open up the balance sheet by the way if in the business view the reports are located business overview reports then we're going to go back on over to the tab to the right, open up the other favorite financial report, that being under the reports, this time the profit and loss report, close in the hamburger and change the range from 010122 tab, 123122 tab, running it to refresh it. This is what we've constructed thus far. Back to the tab to the middle, close in the hamburger and change the range 010122 tab, 123122 tab run it to refresh it that's the system that we've set up let's go to the first tab now open up the bank feeds that we've connected in a prior presentation located in uh, the left hand side under the banking so here we have our bank feeds closing the hand boogie and if you're in the other view the business view they're located under the bookkeeping tab on the left transactions up top and then the bank transactions Okay, that's the setup process we do every time. And last time we've been entering our deposit side of things. So we've got our information sorted first by the uh, detail and then by amount. So we can see our, our deposits up top and see them kind of grouped together. And so last time we've been thinking on the deposits, those are usually tied to, of course, deposits uh, what we received from customers for work that we provided to them. So in other words, in our customer cycle or revenue cycle, at the end of the cycle, we would expect to be having a deposit typically into our checking accounts for goods and services provided. And in the easiest scenario, if we're getting paid from gig work, what we did and concentrated on last time, we might be able to just record income with the record deposit item as it comes through the bank feeds, constructing our books from the bank feeds. However, we might have some more difficult uh, components in that we might have a cash register situation, in which case we would probably need to use the sales receipt form and then make the deposit. We'll talk about that in the future. Or we might have uh, an invoice type of situation where we have to do an accrual component, entering the invoice, receive payment, then make the deposit. The other thing we need to be careful of is what if a deposit comes in that's not from the customer? That doesn't happen all the time, but there's a couple primary scenarios where it would happen. One would be the deposit came from us, the owner, so we needed to put money in in order to finance the business, often happening at the beginning of the business in order to finance the purchase of property, plants, and equipment and inventory to get the business going. 
or it could happen when we're basically building up the business, trying to step up the volume, buying more property, plants, and equipment or fixed assets. Another way that the deposits might come in is if we took out a loan. If we take out a loan, then in order to finance for the same reasons, in order to finance the business, we might have a deposit that's not coming from customers. What we want to do in that scenario is be careful that we don't actually record the deposit as income. So in other words, if you have some kind of system set up where you're just saying all deposits that go into my checking account are income, then if you get a deposit that's from you or the bank, which is not income and you don't differentiate it, you're going to record it incorrectly. Now, the system that we've been looking at, we've been getting deposits from like platforms like YouTube or something like that, which it's clearly delineated in the bank feed data where the deposit is coming from. And we can set up a rule that's going to be specific to who we got the money from. But if you have a system set up, for example, that you're just getting cash and you're just depositing all the deposits that are cash, just recording it as income, for example. And so you're just saying, if anything is a deposit, I'm just recording it as income. That's the assumption. Then you got to make sure that if you put some other kind of deposit in there, that you have some differentiating factor to pick up the other deposits from you or the bank and not record them as income. So let's just see what those two kind of scenarios would look like. And so let's just pretend like that these Skillshare items were from, uh, from us, the owner, we put money in. Now, if we put money in, then we probably wouldn't have a Skillshare thing here. It would just say that there was a bank deposit of some kind. We might not have much more detail than that other than it's a deposit. So then we would say, okay, the only thing we would know is like the dollar amount, which might be conspicuously even oftentimes, because when you make a deposit, you don't put 1,277.55, you probably put 1,300 or something <laughs> into it, right? So that's one way you can kind of differentiate uh, the deposits. But uh, also, of course, if you have the bank feed detail, when the deposits are coming in from customers, that's another way that you can uh, kind of uh, differentiate it. So if I go into it and I say, okay, let's assume that this one was a deposit from, let's say it came from a loan that we took out. So I'm going to say this is going to be a Skillshare, let's just call it Skillshare Bank, Skillshare Bank, assuming it's a loan of some kind. And so I'm going to add that. Now it's not exactly a customer, but I'm going to add it as a customer because it's a deposit. It's not a customer or vendor, really. The point is it's not going to go to an income account. It's got to go to a loan account. So I'm going to set up a new account for it, adding account. And I'm just going to call it a other current liability account. And I'm going to call it a loan payable account, loan payable account. So that's good. Now note that if you have multiple loan payable accounts, there's other issues with regards to the loans that you put on the books. Uh, and let's talk about that in, in a second here, but you might have like a, a loan parent account and then you might put the other loans underneath the parent account. But right now I just want to concentrate on the fact that we're not recording it as income. So I'm going to save it and close it. And so there we have it. We could, we, we probably wouldn't set up a rule necessarily because the, because this isn't a transaction that's going to happen all the time. What you want to do with all the other rules that you set up is make them specific enough so that they would not pick up as income this this deposit from the bank, right? Because the other rules are going to pick up only the items that are that are somewhat specific. If you have a very broad rule that says all deposits I want you to record as income, then you're you're gonna you're gonna miss these deposits that might come from you or the bank and mistakenly record them as income instead of as a as a loan. So let's see what this would look like if we record it. Let's add it. And so boom, I'm going to go to the balance sheet and then scroll up top and run it. So if I scroll up top and run it, I can go down to the checking account. So if I go to the checking account again, I can sort it and customize it up top, filtering it possibly by transaction type, looking at just the deposits. And then I might look at the name and I might want to look at the bank. What did I call it? I called it Skillshare Bank. Skillshare isn't really a bank, obviously, but there it is. There's the deposit. Then if I go into it, it's coming from a deposit form. 
So it's a deposit form, but now it's not going to an income line like we did last time, but instead to a, a loan going back to the balance sheet. The other side, instead of going to the income statement, is now down here in a liability account for the loan payable. So going into that, there's our loan payable account. So going back on over now, just a general rule with the loans. Uh, let's just look at our, our accounting equation. Assets equal liabilities plus equity. Assets are what we have in the business that they're in the business instead of us having them personally because we're using them in order to help generate revenue in the future. And we're doing so because we think the business is capable of, of getting a higher return than us taking the money out and then putting it into like stocks and bonds, for example. We finance the assets, property, plants, and equipment, inventory primarily, by either taking out a loan, right? We take out the loan to buy the property, plants, and equipment, finance it so that we can then generate revenue in the future or through ourselves, our own investment, the equity from the owners, either us investing it, putting it in from our personal side or us retaining the money that has been earned in the business, reinvesting it in the assets that we're purchasing in the business to further uh, grow the business. That's gonna be uh, the general idea of why we would have the, 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 the liabilities and the loans. So notice it's a little bit complex when you have to deal with the financing because kind of you're not on it on, you know, specifically at like a cash system per se now, because now you've got to track this loan payable and there's going to be an, an added component with the loan payable, which is the financing of the loan, which is interest. So just a couple things with loans in general, when you put the loan on the books, you might have multiple loans. So in that case, you might make a, a parent loan account and then make multiple uh, subsidiary accounts to it, listing out each of the financial institutions you got the loan from and possibly the last four digits of the loan number. So for internal reporting, you can track each loan by its loan balance. And for external reporting, you can collapse it to one loan account so that you can give it for external reporting purposes or tax preparation uh, if necessary. Also, you might have short-term and long-term portions of the loan. If a loan that you took out is going to extend beyond a year and you're paying it in installments, like our natural format that we're often most used to, like a mortgage type of loan, you're paying off in same installments, you could have a short-term and long-term portion of the loan. Now, it's not useful, it's not helpful to break out short-term and long-term every time you record a payment to the loan because that's tedious and we can't tie out the balance to the loan. So in that case, I would recommend having one account for the loan payable, breaking out short-term and long-term portion periodically at the end of the year or the end of the month so that you can have that for external reporting purposes, tax preparation purposes, and managerial purposes to kind of make sure you got the cash flow to, to pay off the upcoming uh, loan balances. And then you reverse it so you have only one account so that when you make the actual payments, they're going to that loan account. Another issue with the loan is that maybe you don't get the amortization schedule because you just get the terms of the loan. They might not include an amortization table breaking out interest and principal of each payment. You can make one if they give you the loan terms in Excel or you can possibly have your accountant uh, or CPA or tax preparer help you out with an amortization table. And then when you make the payments to the loan, there's going to be a principal portion and an interest portion of the payments to the loan. What you would like to do, what we've been doing over here on the bank feeds is trying to make the payments on the loan in such a way that they will be automatic, automating them to the extent we can. Because there's a difference between the interest and principal payment, even though the decrease to cash is the same, it makes it difficult to automate the payments. So that's another issue that we have with, with regards to the loan payments. A couple ways you can deal with that. Uh, you, you could, every time you make a loan payment, you can go in there, see it going through the bank feeds and adjust it to match the amortization schedule, properly recording interest expense and loan reduction. Or you could, you, you possibly could just make your payments decreasing all of it to the loan payable account, ignoring interest for the time being recognizing that at the end of the year or the end of the month, you or your accountant is going to take the amortization schedule and then 
adjust the interest versus the the uh, principal portion of the loan and break out the short term and long term portion periodically. If you use that system, you can automate the payments, right? Then I can automate the payments and I can just do periodic adjustments at the end of the period. And that might be a way to go if you're trying to be a bookkeeper that is trying to automate everything as much as possible. But you have to be working with a good CPA or accountant that can make the adjusting entries at the end of the period. Okay, let's do the other one that's often not income. I'm, I'm going to go back on over here and say, okay, let's do the other one. What happened here? I'm going to go down and say, let's just pick another one of these Skillshare ones. And I'm going to go into it. And let's assume this time this was me putting the money in. So it says Skillshare down here, but let's just pretend that this is money coming from me, the owner that I put into the business. So once again, I would need to differentiate that from other deposits so that I don't record it as income. And it's not going to happen all the time because hopefully I'm not putting money into the business all the time. Hopefully as the business gets going, I'm taking money out of the business a lot of the time. So I'm just going to say this is going to be this is going to be owner or something. Owner. I have an owner vendor owner customer, let's say, and I'm going to say save it. And then this one's not going to go into the loan payable. It's trying to guess what I did last time with the Skillshare payment. I'm going to put this instead into an equity account and I'm going to put it into you could put it into the owner's equity directly or you might create another equity account called uh, owner investments, for example. And the uh, so so basically the owner's equity is kind of like retained earnings. The income of the business is going to roll into equity. Opening balance is the balance used by QuickBooks to plug in any kind of miss, any kind of thing that needs to happen to stay in balance. So that's kind of a, a clearing account. That's not really something you want on the books. You want to see what QuickBooks did and kind of fix it, clearing that account out. Draws is the account that's used when we take money out of the business. And then be, and because that's more natural, we do that most of the time. You might not have an investment kind of account. You might just put that into the equity or you can create another account called, you know, owner investments. If it was a corporation, that would be the 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 stocks, the issuance of the stocks. So I'm going to say, all right, this is going to be a equity type of account. And I'm going to say common stock. I'll just say owner's equity. And I'm going to say this is going to be own, owner investment. So I'll say that and let's just save it. The point is it's not going to an income account. I'm not going to be able to set a rule for it oftentimes because I don't plan on putting money into the business all the time. It's going to be a thing that happens every so often when I'm growing or starting the business. Let's add it and check it out. If I go to the balance sheet and run it to refresh it, then I can see checking account is now going up. Let's let's uh, customize it. Let's look at the filters. Let's check it out by type and say we want the uh, deposits and let's check it out by customer and say that we want then the owner customer owner customer. <laughs> there it is. So there's the deposit that we put in here. It obviously was put in with a deposit form. The other side not going to income this time as we've been doing in the past, but rather go into the equity account. So if I go down to the equity side of things, then we've got the uh, owner's equity and there's our investment account. That's what we just added to it. So it's here instead of on the income statement. Now note, if you, if you mess that up and you just record all deposits as income, you're going to have recorded those two items in income on the profit and loss somewhere. And that's not good for income tax reasons. I mean, it makes your, your income statement look better than it actually is because that income was from you, not from customers and your income and net income will be higher. But for income stack tax purposes, if you're in the United States, that's bad because that means you're going to be paying taxes on the money that you put into the business, not the money you earned or the money you got from a loan, not the money you earned. So that's going to be not good if that if that were the case for tax purposes, at least. If I go to the tab to the left, 
note that net income will roll into the equity section. So we're building the net income down here. There's the income on the year. There it is here on the balance sheet. It's going to roll into equity. So if I change the dates up top to 23 and 23, that income rolls into the owner's equity, right? Note that the, the draws and investments traditionally should also roll into equity, but QuickBooks doesn't do that automatically. So if you want these draws and investments to represent only the draws for the current year, you've got to fit, you've got to manually do yourself the closing uh, journal entries, closing out draws and investment to equity. If you don't do that, not a big deal because then these, you just got to recognize that these are going to represent investments and draws over the life or however long you've been recording the draws and investments into them. And you know, that's fine too, because you can look at the detail by just going into it and just looking at what happened in the current year for, for the draws or investment accounts, if you want to do that, but just, just noting that. So that's going to be uh, mainly it here for those two. Let's open up a trial balance and see what we've done thus far opening up a new tab to do so reports on the left i like to see the trial balance because i think it's underrated and it needs to be rated higher i want to increase the rating of the trial balance 010122 12 31 22 run it so we're this is our balance sheet on top of the income statement we're constructing mainly from the bank feeds now these are our asset accounts this is our liability account that we set up now and our equity accounts here's the new equity account we set up and then our income statement income expense accounts and then other income and expenses down below